So this is a video about barbecue thermometers. I have been trying to get a somewhat accurate barbecue thermometer for quite a bit. And of course I completely over engineered it. It did not start like this though. I started with getting some off the shelf ones. For example, uh, this one from AliExpress. I bought this one specifically because it is wireless and it is not Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So I was hoping I could get the data out from this using some uh, SDR. Overall, this is a very simple device. It does not even have a pair option. You just put batteries in it, turn the transmitter and receiver on and you will start seeing readings. At least that it did for a few weeks and then it just stopped working altogether. So uh, yeah, that is just general quality issues with barbecue thermometers. I don't have the transmitter here for this one because I destructively reverse engineered that one. And surprisingly there was not a lot in it. And even by opening it up I could not figure out which frequency it was sending data at. The readings just magically appeared on the display. Another one I got was the this one from uh, Weber. Uh, this is the Weber Connect uh, Smart Barbecue Thermostat. And it is actually a Wi-Fi enabled thing. You have to set up this one with a smartphone connected to the internet because the only thing this thermometer can do is send the readings of the barbecue to Amazon Cloud for it then to be received by the phone again using the cloud, which is massive overkill. But also uh, I have not been able to find a way to retrieve this data outside of their app. It was also a lot more expensive than it needs to be for what it actually does. So yeah, after uh, several failed attempts at just getting an off-the-shelf barbecue thermometer, I just decided to make one myself. I mean, it is not terribly hard. All that the barbecue thermometers have in common is that they are based around roughly the same 100 kilo ohm uh, thermistor uh, barbecue probes. And if I swap around the probes between the different brands, uh, they have the same connector, which is a two and a half millimeter jack plug, and they get roughly the same readings. I say roughly here because these probes are not accurate at all. Um, none of these have actual calibrations from the factory it seems, and none of them even have the option to calibrate them yourself. From what I have been able to measure, the offset of these thermal probes is roughly in the order of 10 degrees. Which is not enough, because if you are cooking meat, usually your target temperature is about 1 or 2 degrees precision. And if you go over that it will be dry, if you go under that it will be too raw, so you need accurate precision. And over time you probably just learned what the offset is and it works, but we have technology, we can make it accurate. So this is the first prototype I have made. It is made in KiCad of course. And uh, this is uh, based around the ESP32. And it has an analog to digital converter and some battery management here. And it is uh, designed to have a display here on the back and it has the sensors here for uh, touch buttons. This is the first time I've tried to integrate touch buttons in the PCB. And they do work, but not very reliably. And my idea was to have a 3D printed case over it and touch through that and that just did not work great. This is one of the displays. It will uh, connect to uh, the flash flex connector here. And then it folds over and sits on the marked location on the back of the board. And the back is actually the front of the, the device. And the issue you can see here is that it's the wrong way around. The display sits uh, the right spot, but the display side is facing the PCB now, which is not great. Um, this is because I messed up the flat flex connector on this version of the board. And this would not be the first time. And if I swap this around, it won't be electrically connected anymore, of course. And 
But yeah, this is how it was supposed to sit on the board here. And then I will draw the entire UI upside down in software. Aside from my uh, mistake with routing the display and the touchpad is not working, this thing does actually work. And you can plug in the thermal probes into the 2.5 millimeter jacks here. I gave this one uh, three inputs. One can be used for the ambient temperature sensor and then two can be used for the probes. And these probes are of course the same ones that are used with this one. And the, the Weber one, I'm actually while debugging been using some from Weber probes and I also got some from AliExpress which are replacement probes for uh, some of these thermometers. So uh, the board in this configuration has been my software development board and a uh, debugging board for a while. I've been working on this project for, well, I think since the beginning of last year, with a lot of pauses in between. But yeah, without a display, it's a bit annoying to work with. So I made a second revision and that is these green PCBs. Let's grab this one. And this is basically exactly the same. Let's get it a bit closer. Uh, but with more features removed that I didn't need. If I uh, put it side by side with the previous prototype, you will see that it is mostly the same layout. I moved the connector for the flat flex so it uh, lines up. And on this revision, this connector is still wrong because it is now facing the right way but I have the connections shifted over by one pin and the whole connector is mirrored because I did not quadruple check everything before sending it off to be produced. On the back here it will no longer have the display instead it has the area here where I will glue down uh, the battery holder and it has the connectors for a one wire temperature sensor. And that is one of these connectors here. And it's just easier to just solder them manually because doing through hole parts on TLC is a bit expensive. So that will fit in here and can be used as a reference probe because the one wire temperature probes are factory calibrated. So it can be used as a calibration reference somewhat. The usual one wire uh, thermal probes are 12-bit temperature sensors that are factory calibrated up to 0 0.125 degrees or something, which is more than enough to at least get the resistance-based sensors within one degree. So let's plug in this display here. And it's also is a bit fiddly. So it will fold over like this and sit above the components in this version of the design. And uh, I don't uh, have the issue here that the components behind the display will make the thickness of the device awkward because I no longer have buttons that match up to the display. The case for it is of course done with a turbo case. And this is the prototype for trying to fit the display. It has some nubs on the inside that will perfectly hold this display in place. This one does not fit perfectly now because the protective foil is still on it here with this little thing that makes the shapes a bit weird. But this holds the display perfectly in place as long as something applies pressure to the back. And uh, if you have the board here, it has the screw holes that align perfectly with the posts here. And with a bit of foam in between, it will sandwich the display perfectly in place to be always perfectly aligned on the front panel. So this is the board in KiCad. And you can see this is the ESP32. It's based around and this is just my simple reference of having it connected to a USB-C connector because it's 2025 and I'm not going to <laughs> manufacture or design anything that has a USB-B connector on it. And this is just a simple stuff to make it work like old school USB. Uh, I have no uh, debug wires or reset buttons or anything on this ESP32 because in my experience it just works fine by flashing directly over USB. The 
the reset buttons and flashing buttons is more a thing when you have the USB to serial converters in between, which are not necessary anymore with the USB 32S3 at least. Um, then there's the one wire for the temperature probe. This just connected to a random pin. It works. And the most important part is this uh, uh, analog to digital converter. This is a 16-bit converter, which is uh, very much overkill for any temperature reading for simple cooking. But since I want the data to also be in Grafana as a chart, so I can see a long-term cooking stuff that takes a day uh, in a nice chart, it makes sense to have a few more bits of resolution to just have smoother charts there. And these are the three plugs for the, the inputs of the thermal probes. They're simple TRS, uh, TS probes actually. And I don't connect electrically the other pins, but they are there for mechanical stability of the plugs. The probes are 100 kilo ohm at uh, around room temperature. And I pull them up with these 100 kilo ohm resistors, so they form a resistor divider. And that is then read out by the ADC. I also have a resistor divider here to the battery pin, so I can use the fourth channel of the ADC to read the battery level, which I have not implemented yet. And the ADC just connects over I squared C here to two of the pins and it shares the bus with the display, which is this connector. And the mistake I made here is that I had it connected like this because I had to flip it over uh, when flipping the part. So the display sits on the other side of the board. So I did that with the not this one, flip command in KiCad, which not perfectly aligns around the center. So as you can see, after flipping it, I have an open pin here. If I flip back, uh, it's just by one pin. So that happened on that PCB design. And that is now fixed in this version. Hopefully I will have to produce a version three to test everything again. But it connects over I squared C again here. And very importantly, that I have missed in the previous versions is that you have to connect these two pins together to be SCA when you use this display in I squared C mode. A lot of stuff just seems to using a seems to use it in SPI mode where that is not necessary because it's two separate data lines for the two directions there. Then there's uh, this piece of uh, battery management and power regulation. This part here is all the battery charging stuff. The battery protection chip is the first thing that is connected to the actual battery and it makes sure that I cannot over discharge a battery uh, and this allows the device to be safely used with unprotected uh, lithium cells. And this is a charger chip. It is very slow, but uh, mainly because I set it at 400 milliamp charging here, but it's fine because usually you don't need it to be quickly charged to be used again. And then there is this uh, power switching and regulation part. This uh, piece of schematic uh, I've got from A13. It is switching uh, to uh, between battery power and USB power that's coming from here, uh, depending on what's plugged in. And then with this regulator, it gets converted to the 3.3 volt that is required to run the chips on the board. And finally, this chip and this regulator, this is a small boost regulator that converts the voltage to 12 volts, which is required as a bias voltage, I think, for the OLED display. And that is basically everything that is needed to make a thermal probe. You just uh, route this out and it will work. So this is the PCB. 
This is uh, the third revision, revision C, which fixes everything I found uh, when making the first two. And this one hopefully will be the first version that has a working display out of the box. You can see that uh, I have here uh, this blue outline, this stuff on uh, user 6 layer. This is the turbo case metadata. I can simply draw a line around the board using the tools here in KiCad and this will be generated into the 3D model that I can print as a case for the thing. And that includes this footprint here, which represents the display. And using this footprint, I can align where the flat flex will line up compared to uh, the connector here. And then when I print everything, it will align automatically and all the alignments uh, nubs inside the front panel will be in exactly the right spot. So this is one of the prototype B boards that actually has the display working. And um, as you can maybe see, if, you, if I zoom in, that this one has been slightly reworked by uh, using some hot air to remove the connector from the board, flip it around, align it again and solder it back down. This has no mechanical stability whatsoever, but it makes the display work so I can actually finish up the software. In the end, the easiest way to get everything of this board working was to simply put ESP Home on it, because it supports all the parts I put on this board. And that gets me 90% of the functionality. Um, the only thing that is missing is the automatic calibration here. I have no idea if it's possible in ESP Home to make this process where you uh, switch to a calibration mode and then it reads out the resistance from the thermal probes and the temperature from the one wire sensor and then writes the three calibration values into some permanent storage. Uh, I had that working in my old code before I switched to ESP Home, but in that code base I don't have any support for the display yet. Also, as you can see here, I have this prototype uh, with a case with a working screen. And this is the same case design as I shown in KiCad before, except this one is a bit larger because it has to fit the connector sticking out. And this provides just enough mechanical stability to have everything in a somewhat usable package. So that is all I have so far for the barbecue probe. Uh, efficiency has to be uh, manufactured now and tested and I will probably make a follow-up video once that arrives and I have a nice case for it that uh, shows it off actually working completely. But yeah, that's all for, the, for now. Uh, thanks for watching.